majority of cleansers, shampoos, and all these other personal care products and cosmetics are contaminated, uh, either with the hidden carcinogens or with the actual known uh, carcinogens. We're dealing. Uh, there is an unnecessary pool of carcinogens in our food, household product, and cosmetic products. These carcinogens, in their cumulative impact, increase the risk of cancer and other toxic ailments, especially to small infants and children. Nearly every single cosmetic product that you can buy from a store shelf has a plethora of chemicals which are designated as carcinogens by health agencies. That means they cause cancer, and yes, carcinogens from cosmetics absolutely get absorbed into your skin and kill your brain cells, as well as the cells of your organs and glands, and that includes your testicles and ovaries, meaning it kills your hormones, virility, and intelligence. Yes, they also kill hair strands and hair follicles as well, but that should be the least of your worries because it also kills your manhood and womanhood. We're dealing with products to which people are exposed literally from conception till death. When I say conception, because of a mother applying materials to her skin, but the material is absorbed and affects the fetus. So the first point is, the duration of exposure is from conception to death. The second point is, there is a very large surface area of skin which is exposed to some uh, personal care products. And thirdly, the skin is highly permeable to what you put on it. That was toxicologist and author of best-selling book, Toxic Beauty, Samuel Epstein. The skin and hair are living, breathing, highly permeable and porous tissues. Everything you place on the skin or hair is absorbed not only by the skin and hair, but makes its way into the bloodstream and organs. If you would not eat something orally, then why would you apply it topically on your skin? The body, glands and organs consume it nonetheless. For new sites, that it's been five years since she last washed her hair with shampoo. Hey, why? Why did you decide? And are you going for, what's the end point? Or why yeah, did you so decide? To I, about five years ago, started getting interested in examining the products that I use on myself, I use on my family, and we use in our house. The average American woman puts how many chemicals on herself in a day? How many do you think? 515. That's how many chemicals the average woman puts on her body in a day. I'm more concerned about the chemicals and the unintended consequences that those will have on my body and my child it's and the planet. So many smell, oh, right? But to me, after being away from those chemicals for so long, that actually smells toxic to me. My nose reacts violently to those kinds of chemicals. And I love mm. the idea of what you're doing because shampoo didn't exist 500 years exactly. ago. Exactly. The reason why homeless people and also the majority of people from indigenous cultures do not bald and thin like modern commercial people is because they are not applying shampoos with cancer-causing chemicals to their hair and brain on a daily basis. These chemicals not only strip the hair of its precious natural oils, but they also kill the hair strand and the hair follicle and even permeate into the brain killing brain cells. If you are a healthy person, which is extremely rare to find these days, then the precious natural oils and sebum of your scalp and hair are supposed to protect, thicken, and moisturize your hair. Just the way we find in every single wild animal with their beautiful fur coats. But that is a topic for another video. People especially Americans, generally assume that if a personal care product is unsafe or causes cancer, that it would be banned or that we would be warned of it by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. But that is completely wrong. Cosmetic products are unregulated by the FDA and have no requirements for safety. The 1938 Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act does not require cosmetics or personal care products 
to be approved as safe before they are marketed and sold to consumers. These chemicals store in your brain and organs, dulling your mind and IQ, disturbing your hormones and derailing the unfoldment of the manhood or womanhood which nature intended for you. They are also playing a significant role in the massive gender confusion today. Where the top oceanographic scientists from Sweden showed us recently, the largest and most primitive areas of the, of the planet's waterway are highly contaminated. They tested for 2,684 chemicals and stopped because there wasn't one chemical they tested for that the whales didn't have in. Nearly 3,000 chemicals, they said, let's look for this, they found it. Let's look for this, they found it. Let's look, almost 3,000 chemicals they gave up because they realized there is not a chemical that man makes that we know how to test that's not in these incredibly pristine waters wildlife at this point. Ireland, my homeland, and the Shannon International River Basin, which encompasses 11 rivers, the effect of endocrine chemicals on fertile brown trout were investigated in 2010. Among the effects, the estrogenic effects identified in the water where platelets and activates are used as solvents in such products as perfumes, cosmetics, etc. These studies not only confirm the presence of estrogen in the river, but also found in some sites that 100% of male brown trout samples showed either endocrine disruption or intersexuality. What percentage? And where does it come from? Perfumes and cosmetics. The chemicals in your shampoo and other cosmetic products will lodge in your testicles, in your ovaries, in your brain, nerves, and glands just the same way they do in whales and other animals. And yes, they cause brain fog, low hormones, low IQ, hair loss, premature aging, and disease. In just the same way they do in fish, rodents, alligators and other animals go back 100 years and you would be hard pressed to find a man who would willingly delegate himself to a life of video games and virtual reality these cosmetic products which have no scientific basis are a chemical and synthetic warfare against your manhood against your womanhood and your hair loss is merely a symptom of dying virility. My name is Vera Samad. I am a polymath and a regenerative farmer with expertise in many areas. My published works are available on Amazon in which I share my ideas on health, nutrition, as well as spiritual and physical development. Please subscribe for future videos, like and leave your comments below. Thank you and have a wonderful day.